No woman should be childless unless by choice. These words were from a fertility expert in the southwestern region of Uganda, Mbarara. Dr. Hilary Ahisiwe and his colleagues at Neocare Clinic has since lived to work to the truth of his own words. 24th June 2022 was another day to affirm such a court as this fertility center recorded her first in vitro fertilization baby boy. The success of this procedure is also the first of its kind in the western part of Uganda, just like Dr. Masembe puts. We are lucky that our very first patient delivered with us and we got a bouncing healthy baby boy and we are very excited about this. We are very happy. Neokea is very happy and the community at large is very happy. Beyond the joy that you could have ordinarily met, the mother of this child, whose identity won't be revealed, shares her long walk to motherhood. But scientifically, how could this be possible? IVF is in vitro fertilization where we fertilize the egg and the sperm in the lab. There are about five stages that we go through. The first stage is stimulating a woman's eggs and we do ultrasound scans, we do blood tests in trying to monitor the response and we keep changing the doses as well and that's what we call cycle monitoring. Now around day 12 when eggs are about to mature and the process is painless then through a tiny needle and with the aid of ultrasound scan these eggs are picked up once they receive these eggs, they analyze them for quality and numbers and then fertilize these eggs using the partner's spams. Those spams are provided on the same day when we are picking these eggs. So usually within three days, we are able to tell that this egg is fertilized and has formed an embryo. Now we choose now to transfer these embryos to the mother's womb and that is the next step pick up these babies called embryos and inserting them into the uterus of this mother. What do we do with extra embryos in case many eggs were fertilized? We keep them and these embryos are able to safely stay there for even up to 10 years. So in the future, in case this mother or this couple wants another baby, they already have the embryos kept. 14 days later after embryo transfer, this woman comes back to our clinic for a pregnancy test and in case this test is positive then we say the process was successful. The joyous 49 year old also shares about how this was a smooth process. <laughs> Uh, but under what circumstances may IVF actually be an option? There are about four things that must be normal for a natural conception to take place. For a man, we need normal spams. If we have men with sperm problems, still the only way to go is IVF. If women are growing older than 35, we say they are having advanced age. And that has an impact on the number and quality of their eggs. And when they reach 40 years, their eggs are almost completely finished, their body, and they undergo what we call menopause. So if we find women at that age, their best way to conceive still is IVF. 
Some people, for a reason or another, they have their eggs finished before they even reach the age of 35. Still, these people will need IVF. A woman can't have an egg, a man can't have a sperm, but this couple needs to have a child. Then we have to adopt an embryo from someone who has embryos to them. Again, this is through IVF. A woman, for one reason or another, may not be able to hold a pregnancy. Maybe her uterus was operated on and removed, or it is structurally unable to carry a baby. And they have to use another woman's womb to carry their pregnancy. That is called a third party conception or surrogacy. Again, this is part of IVF. With IVF, indeed, age is just a number. <laughs> Sankara Vyanuhanga, AETV, Mbarara.